Project Steve Part. Oh no, sorry, it's there, isn't it? Hello, Project Steve. If you'd have seen yesterday's video, then you'll know that something isn't working quite as well as it should do with the turbo boost. And if you didn't see yesterday's video, I'm not really surprised because I didn't get around to posting it. But the gist is this, turbo's not boosting, lack of power. It's still picking up a bit of speed, but there's no, no punch, no kick in the back. This is what I've checked so far. With the engine cover off, of course, I have replaced the air mass sensor and it wasn't that. I've checked all of the pipes, see if there's any leakage anywhere. And the EGR, I've blanked off temporarily to see whether that is causing the problem that isn't causing the problem. But now I believe I have found the problem and it's to do with the turbo. Turbo. More specifically though, the boost actuator is sticking. It's not just sticking, it's stuck. That's my job for the day. And now it looks like I've changed it. Now this is a turbo also off a L series engine, off a Freelander. And I just need to remove this and in principle it should be quite easy just pop that off undo the two eight mil nuts and that clip there that's the boost actuator off and it works so I can stick it on that's the actuator put back on or, well the replacement actuator off a turbo that I know was working perfectly well when I last drove it and of course I'm not I haven't got the opportunity to even do 10 miles per hour, never mind 30. Come on, Honda Jazz. No. Almost nothing. So it's not even that. Should be giving me a bit of a push in the back, but it's really not. Nothing's really happening there. Unless I've just got too used to Nigel being so super quick with 400 brake horsepower. Just seen a man on a push bike then, um, gratefully giving the nod to an old lady in a Honda Jazz of all things, backing out onto a main road because she stopped and it basically didn't run him over. But it's a pub car park, she could have just turned around in there. It's disappointing, I honestly thought that was going to be the fix. Having run out of ideas then, I popped into the garage and had a word with one of the chaps. And he came and had a look at it and he couldn't find anything wrong with it. But it was still wasn't boosting but now it is now it's pulling what is it with cars why do cars have to do such strange things all the time go i must say this really is a rather lovely day indeed lovely day for removing headlamps from a rover 75 As you can see, I have acquired a streetwise. So far, two problems I see with this car. The window regulator is not working. And also, it's not opening from the inside, but that's because of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is find another one of those. Project Stuart. Stuart the streetwise, uh, uh, Stuart the streetwise, uh, uh, Stuart the streetwise, uh, uh, Stuart, Stuart the streetwise. He even has his own song. I actually, I have to admit that I made that song up for him though. Stuart the streetwise has come to me today with just a couple of minor faults. It is my car. Yeah, I bought it. First of all, the paint work. The paint work is it's not too bad it's got a few scratches and scuffs here and there a couple of minor dents like the old trolley dings and things like that so, um, and then it's got this big hole in the front bumper there yeah that's a big hole 
inside, unfortunately, the seats have seen better days. Look at that. That's not very good at all, is it? These pretend leather plastic seats are vulnerable for obviously splitting. But I get the impression with this that someone's been on a journey and they were a bit peckish and looked at it and thought, is that cake? I've just fitted a new window regulator because it wasn't working and now I have to find one of these clips somewhere because this, as you pull that, the thing's been pulled down rather than up, which is what it should do, or across. And that means you have to be on the outside of the car if you want to open it, which isn't much use if you're on the inside trying to get out. This door has the same problem. It's just not opening. So, some investigations must ensue. That engine sounds rather nice and starts on the button, as they say. It's a funny phrase, that, actually. I've only had a couple of cars here that have a push-button start, and one of them didn't start on the button. Just pressed it, and it just kept uh, turning over and nothing happening. So, I don't like um, to use that phrase. So I'm not going to. Anyway, it seems like distraction got the better of me there because what I wanted to say was that although it starts on the button, it, it, it smokes quite a lot and it doesn't pull as well as it should do. So, time to investigate. Investigate, investigate time, investigate, investigate time. I found the cause of the low boost anyway it's this pipe with a great big split down the middle of it but I do have another street rise diesel and I've already taken the pipe off of that and there it is with a split in exactly the same place worse in fact let's refer to the notice board to see how well I'm doing this week so far Tuesday was the only day that actually got anywhere Wednesday uh, I had a plan to do that, but I ended up having to do this, and I didn't realise I was going to get this. Then tomorrow, strip the 45, didn't know like that's going to happen, because I've got to carry on with this. And then, that as well. What an unbelievably grotty day. All this heat, and all this oil, and muck and everything. None of it was expected. It's nice to have Steve working back as it should do. I'm just a little bit bemused as to what went wrong in the first place. I was not expecting to be getting full of oil and carbon deposits on two occasions for the same type of engine for the same kind of problem. It's amazing how things go, isn't it? Do you think the tooth fairies see our beach yet?